And Joan Fung had a student, a woman in Bangkok, who whenever she was around him was suffering from foot and mouth disease. She'd say something, she'd mean it well, and it always came out wrong. There was one time she told a John Fung that she finally realized, after all these years of studying with him, that working with the breath, adjusting the breath, was not just a technique for samatha or tranquility, it was also a technique for vipassana or insight. He reported that remark to me. He said, look, she even looks down on the teachings of the Buddha. Because it's true, working with the breath is not just for getting the mind still. That is one of the reasons we work with it. We try to make the body comfortable. We try to make the body comfortable so that we can settle down and be still and stay for long periods of time. But in doing so, the fact that we're adjusting things gives us some insight into fabrication, how we shape our experience. And that should be a lesson that you apply not only as you're sitting and watching the breath, but as you go through the day. Look at what you're doing that shapes your experience. Because if there's any stress in the mind, it means you could shape it better. But all too often we're not aware of the fact that we're shaping our experience. We think it's just handed to us ready-made. This person is like that, that person is like this, this situation is like that or this. But we don't look into what we're doing to shape those things. Even if our influence is not that big outside, we are shaping things inside in terms of our reaction. And it's what we're doing right now that's going to make the difference between whether we suffer or not. When the Buddha was teaching karma, it wasn't like he was laying all the blame for suffering in the past. He's saying the situations in the present will come from the past. But whether you suffer from them or not, that's something that comes from your own present fabrication. So you want to get sensitive to that, and working with the breath helps you that way. Something as simple as the breath coming in and going out, you begin to realize that you can have it go in and go out lots of different ways, and it will have a, lots of different impacts on the body. And that impact will then spread to the mind. A process as simple as this. And then you think of your verbal fabrication around the, the things you encounter during the day. What you choose to focus on, how you choose to focus on it, what you say about it. That can either make you suffer or not. So keep your attention focused there and what you're doing to shape things. Because that's where the Buddha's teachings are focused. That's what the whole purpose of the Dharma is focused. To show that you're suffering, that you don't have to. The causes come from within. No matter how bad the situation is outside, the causes for the suffering come from within. And thus place some responsibility on you, but it also puts you in a position of power. If we had to change the world in order to be happy, in order to be free from suffering, there would be no end to the suffering. You get something established just right, just the way you'd like it, there'd be a lot of people who wouldn't like that, or even to everybody in the world liked what you had to dis designed. Still it wouldn't stay. So take responsibility for your suffering. Learn how to talk to yourself in new ways. Starting with the breath and then spreading out to all the other ways you talk to yourself in the course of the day. And that's when your efforts will be right on target.